find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hola, me llamo Pecina de la Muerta. Hello, Internet. Today's July 29th, 2004, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, episode 38, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and still to come. On today's show, we're going to discuss a lot of stuff. We got Comic-Con 2014. We got uh, Independence Day 2, The Rock. Uh, he's going to be a superhero, apparently, for DC. And uh, we got Guardians coming out this weekend. So uh, let's jump into it. I am your host uh, at Rambling Mango, Malango. (laughs) Also, we got uh, Sorg, also in Pittsburgh. Also, yes, I am. uh, And not really, I was in the woods, so not much for movie watching. Actually, a little bit. I can talk about that later, some of the movies I did watch. Now I think about it, it got... It got weird. Um, But no, ready to talk some movies. And so you guys can catch me up on what happened at San Diego Comic-Con while I spent four days out in the middle of Ohio. (laughs) All right. Also from New York, back on the show after a two-week hiatus. Mad Mike, what's going on, brother? I am tanned, I am toned, and I am stoked about Guardians and Comic-Con. Woo! (laughs) Nice. I also saw some movies. Also saw yes. some movies. Yeah, I think we uh, we definitely both saw Lucy this weekend, which was uh, lots of fun. Um, oh man, Mike, I was not ready for this, but let's jump into the trailer that uh, we can hit that first. Oh, uh, the Deadpool trailer that leaked on the internet. I I, I don't know when it leaked. Saturday was it during Comic Con? Yeah, it was it was Saturday. But I I we should make this clear. This. Deadpool trailer is not for a movie that's coming out. Yes. It is for a movie that was supposed to come out, but then um, Green Lantern did what it did. <laughs> On a yeah. notable point, this is how uh, CG artists get hired. <laughs> uh, this is an all CG trailer of awesomeness, uh, and Ryan Reynolds voice does the voiceover. And uh, that's all I got for it. It was interesting. If you haven't seen it, try and find it a lot. It, it really kind of blood. There should have been it, more blood. It kind of reminded me of the uh, cutscenes from the Deadpool Xbox game. Ah, uh, yeah, that that makes sense. I mean, and the the cutscenes from that are hilarious. Like mm. they're very very funny. But Ryan Reynolds voicing Deadpool in just makes it on every level. It, he's like. If Van Wilder went off the deep end and just started killing people, <laughs> that's what we get, and it there's nothing wrong with that. That's so true. Yeah, speaking of that, like he definitely they definitely should have done a Deadpool movie over Green Lantern, right? Are we agreeing with this? Ryan Reynolds would have fit completely. In that. I mean, I guess with possibility of a Justice League, it makes sense to already have a Green Lantern, but yeah. Uh, uh, don't get me started on Justice League. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. So uh, this week in theaters, uh, Lucy uh, decided to pop its head out, um, and it was interesting. It pulled in a nice forty-three point nine million. In my opinion, I think that's interesting. <laughs> the uh, drop off yeah. next week for Lucy is going to be huge. Yes. As well for Hercules, which only pulled in a 29.8. And the third movie uh, rounding out was uh, Dawn of the Plans of the Apes. Um, a funny note, when these movies came out, um, before I went to see these, I checked the uh, Rotten Tomato score. Both movies like kind of fluctuated before opening weekend. But both going in, I think both of these movies were roughly around 64%. After like Sunday, Hercules still kind of held strong around like 62. Lucy had dropped to about 58. 
But yeah, it's, still, um, it's still pretty good though, as far as Rotten Tomatoes goes. Yeah, I mean, my opinions on Lucy. We'll talk about it later in, the, in our spoiler portion of the show. But yeah, you can tell by my tone, I am like over hills. I am everywhere. Um, okay. <laughs> by the way, um, talking about Rotten Tomatoes, Guardians is at a ninety-four percent. I, I thought I saw ninety-two percent. Or nope. 98, 98%. Uh, it, it's, it's high. <laughs> it's red <really> high. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so to be realistic, the predictions before the movies, I don't hold a lot of weight because I, I try not to even look at it sometimes because after that's, you know, after that's Friday, Saturday, that's when you truly see what the people thought. And I think that's all that really matters. The critics are, are pompous, like myself. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, Comic Con, Comic Con, Comic Con, Comic Con, Comic Con. So my first disappointment with Comic Con was that I missed trailers. <laughs> Starting off with disappointment, I, oh, I missed a whole bunch of teasers. Uh, I was so upset. I, uh, I like, I remembered Friday. I was like, all right, I'm definitely gonna make sure I catch whatever I can on Saturday, and then I forgot. And then Monday rolls around, and everybody at work's like, oh, my gosh, did you see all the awesome stuff? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I missed Batman and Superman, and I was disappointed. And also the footage from Ant-Man, I missed that. <sighs> I did get to see Mad Max, and I wasn't sure what I was watching. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was watching At Midnight last night, and and uh, Chris Hardwick said, isn't it funny that Mel Gibson has kind of become Mad Max? And that's an excellent point. This is true. <laughs> um, um, I, I did get to see the Batman versus Superman leaked footage. What I heard from that is it was amazing. Do you uh, agree? That would be a no. No, that's so you... Be no. Disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, for for those of you who are, who are also wrestling fans that listen to this show, um, a couple of years ago there was a segment where uh, the Undertaker made his big return to the ring, and then before the Undertaker could even say anything, Triple H made his return, and the two of them stared at each other for about five minutes. They stared at the WrestleMania sign. And then they stared back at each other. Now, replace The Undertaker for Superman and replace Triple H with Batman in bat armor. And that's basically what you have. They just stared at each other. I'm sorry. It, it, it was cool to see the bat armor. I don't think we need to go all the way to Dark Knight Rises in the second Superman movie, but whatever. I, I it's gonna happen. <laughs> now wait a minute. This is a, this is basically a teaser, right? Now now not seeing it. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's loading on the site that I'm trying to bring it up. Uh, it's in Japanese, so I can't tell if it's on a copyright notice or not. Um, well, it doesn't matter. There were there was no dialogue anyway. But I do have pictures. I'm kind of afraid <laughs> to show these just in case we get yanked for it, you know. Um, but really, so okay, so it's a teaser, right? It's a teaser. Yes. So what more do you want from a teaser? This is way more than we got from the Superman teasers, guys. Yeah, but you know, you know what a good teaser is, Sorg. What the Flash teaser. That's true. Yes. That was a good. Te- that, that was, was a good. lot of teaser. That is not the typical teaser for sure. Well, no, no. They just released a new one. They just released a new one over Comic Con. Okay. It was it was called Speed Trap. It's um, like it's just a cop sitting in a uh, police car monitoring the traffic. Okay. And he's and he's doing he's taking a radar a radar gun of cars passing by, and he's looking up the name Allen. Like he clearly knows Barry Allen. And then all of a sudden you hear a rumble and like flash speeds by and he catches the radar gun at 710 miles an hour. Hold on a sec. I'm actually blowing it up now. Oh, he's got some oil on. Blango, uh, what else you got? Um, I noticed some other interesting uh, things. All right, so I'm looking through the document now. 
apparently there are going to be way too more or too many sequels that we'd rather not uh, watch. But still, uh, before I get to that, I just came across the Batman vs Superman, and the big thing was that Wonder Woman was revealed. I don't know if that's something that we should have cared about. I know we're going to. It looks like Xena. Yeah. No. That's all right. Sure, it's all right. Why is that not all right? Why? Why? Uh, why shouldn't Wonder Woman look like Xena? Should she look like the one in the seventies to you? She yes. What? Why can't Why can't any of the DC comics have bright colors or or spandex? While we're at it, or spandex. They're all muted colors. They all look. Well, well I think the whole. Depressed. I think the whole point of that is is hey, you know, we we. we we don't want it to look like a giant, colorful, primary color show. That's what makes them look stupid, you know? Oh, yeah, because it really didn't work out for Avengers, did it? <laughs> the Avengers, they did a bit, you know? Avengers they darkened it a over bit. A bi- oh, really? Really? I think they, they Tony, modernized the Tony Captain Stark America. Tony Stark doesn't do anything dark, Sorg. That's true. Tony Stark does not do anything. Even They even referenced it in the movie mm-hmm. because Captain America says... The uniform, isn't that a little outdated? And Coulson says, people may just need a little (laughs) old-fashioned. They reference that in the movie. Like, even in Winter Soldier, when he wears the darker uniform, he's like, no, this doesn't work, and goes back to the traditional bright red, white, and blue. (laughs) DC Comics do not have to be so fucking depressing. It's still they it's don't. still early. It's still early. It, 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 it don't I, come on, man. It's a teaser. It's a teaser. It doesn't mean it's going to look precisely that color scheme. How bright did you think she's going to be in the Man of Steel universe? I I, I want something that's bright in that Man of Steel universe. <laughs> like if Luther shows up in a bright green robotic suit, yes, then you'll I, be happy. The happy version. Bring it how about, on. Uh, okay, how about sequels? We are getting way too many sequels that were announced. We're getting a Guardians 2, which I have, I'm actually okay with. Okay. Even after not seeing. The f- and James Gunn is writing and directing it. Y- yeah. Um, I don't know that I necessarily care about the Sin City 3. Um, oh, I didn't even hear about that one. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez are in talks on that. And then a Godzilla. We're getting more Godzilla. Did they see. also announce Mothra? Mothra and like a King yeah. Kong movie and Rodan, Mothra and some other person. Can, I don't can't know. we just get to Mecha Streisand and be done with it? People are going to be excited about Godzilla. I don't know why. <laughs> but that's my opinion. We're all entitled to our opinions. I like. I watched a little bit of the Christopher Nolan and um, uh, what's his face? The uh, yeah 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 yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> I watched a little bit of that. Christopher Nolan makes me laugh. He was like, I don't understand, but I didn't understand the hype of Comic Con, so I decided that I'd just show up. No, oh, please. You're telling me people didn't tell you that this is the thing, the CND of all the Comic Cons. Uh, but apparently, people got a kick out of that. Uh, hey, did you guys, I'm seeing that there is uh, some footage. Now, oh, we will talk about this. I'll talk about this at some other point. There's a trailer that I'm very interested in. But um, yeah, that's Comic Con. I don't know. I, I think it's good and bad, but that's, of all the Comic Con, San Diego is the big one. And it definitely seems like movies now are definitely like. Isn't it, isn't it kind of the because um, you don't have like a movie convention, you know, and San Diego Comic Con really has kind of become that. Right. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, and, and not just like, of course, we have the, the, the comic book movies. We're talking about a lot of that. You have your Flash and you have your Avengers. You have your um, uh, uh, Batman Superman, but also outside comic books, too. Like Godzilla, that doesn't have anything to do with comic books. Yes, there's comic books of him, but it's all pop culture. And I love that that this has become a pop culture everything media extravaganza. There's a I haven't looked yet, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of video game news that came out of there too. Uh, I know I oh, saw yeah. something about Marvel, uh, like you know, for instance, Marvel uh, uh, mobile games. I, I did see an article on you know. So there's a lot of announcements there. Which I remember when New York Comic Con going up there with you, Mike. There's a ton of video games. Like I think half of the main floor where they have the the, the insane boost are video games. 
you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I went to uh, San Diego Con a few years ago, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of video game stuff going on there. A whole, a whole lot. Like, um, I know they did some more Smash Brothers stuff there. Like, I think they revealed some new levels and things like that. But there's, there is, and there's even like actual comic news. Like they talked about um, the WWE is doing the Secret Raw comic, which just sounds really intriguing. Hmm. There were uh, there were two other things I I just uh, saw. Um, Ira Stark, I I pretty sure I just butchered her name, but from Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, Maisie Williams. She's going to be in a possible adaptation of The Last of Us. That's freaking awesome. I would be interested to see. That's a game. That's something we're going to have to do a show on. Uh, movies that definitely should be ga- or games that definitely need to become movies. But I think The Last of Us has a great story plot. I think that would be a good one for her. And also, uh, this was also in the rundown for today's show, but we might as well talk about this. So... Dwayne Johnson just straight up came out. They were asking him in an interview, you know, mm-hmm. what superhero would you want to play? And he was like, you know, I'm in talks. Uh, he's like, certainty heroes need to, um, you know, mimic my persona. Oh, 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 well, it was a very playful interview. I did watch this, Malengo. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and he was dancing around. He's like, who would you want to be in the DC universe? And he's like, well, there's talks. And, and he's smiling the whole time. Like, he wants to tell you so bad. And he's like, he's like, he's like, and he dances around it, dances around it, dances around it. And he's like, he's like, just say one word. Just say one word, man. And I, <laughs> and I, I know you, you definitely <laughs> have a view on this there, Mike. I, I, no, I have a theory about it. Okay. I have a feeling that he is still playing Black Adam. Okay. Because Black Adam was the original, like, Shazam. Mm-hmm. And then he became corrupted, and then Shazam, like, threw him into the sun. So I I, I really, like, I know it sounds like he's teasing that he's going to be Captain Marvel. I really think he's going to be Black Adam. I don't know why. Like, I... I feel because Black Adam still says Shazam to get like to get his powers. Like, hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I saw I saw some concept art. I definitely think you're. I I would side with that. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Because, I think I mean, that's why he was smiling so much because like I'm going to lead everyone in one direction, then spin them around, and I'm gonna be Black Adam. Yeah, because some- the rock, the rock. As a character actor, just his build, his look, it makes more sense for Black Adam and not for Shazam. Unless they're just going to like change everyone's concept of Shazam because he looks too similar to Superman, which is highly possible. But I still think he's going to be Black Adam. It's possible. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see what develops mm-hmm. of that. So, uh, let me wrap up the last of Comic Con talk. So sure. these were some of the uh, notable disappointments from Comic Con. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, audiences were primed for Jurassic World, and all they got were a origin story of King Kong instead. I think that's mm-hmm. a pooper. Uh, <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man Three gets pushed back to 2018. I that's think that's never, a good thing. That movie's never gonna happen. <laughs> movie's never gonna happen. Sony is just going to keep like, oh yeah, 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 we're yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna make it. No, no, Marvel, you're not allowed to have it back. No. <laughs> well, are they under are they under the same thing like Fantastic Four that they have to make a movie within so much time? Yes, and they are. So so they're like, yeah, we'll do that. It may just slide into like a different version. That or was something, that right? was the only reason they rebooted it in the first place mm-hmm. was because they didn't want to try and waste time hammering out a deal with Sam Raimi so they're like eh, mm. screw it we'll just well, I think it. it wasn't just Raimi like I think it was like most of the cast most of the major cast too uh, from the sounds of it well so. they, they were they were tied to Raimi like if Raimi wasn't true. doing it true. hey we got some comments from the chat room if we can uh, 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 I do have one more thing from comics sure no problem then we'll get to that um, they showed a trailer for Arrow season 3 and Rachel Ghoul is in it and mm-hmm. oh my god! And mm-hmm. they also just announced today that they cast Wildcat. Nice, nice. 
So I'm super excited about what's nice, going to be nice. So we do have some comments from the chat room. Uh, Belengo, if you need to go check on something else, uh, me and Mike can take this. If, uh, yeah, I'll if be you right want. back. No problem. No problem. I got dog barking now, too, so that's cool, too. Uh, <laughs> go, go and mute your stuff on the way out there, Malengo. Um, right. So, anyways, as my dog starts taking off, great. Uh, my... <laughs> Mike uh, uh, from the chat room. Pat him. Pat him. It's okay. He won't bite your face off. I promise ish. He's running from you. Buddy. Um, anyways, dogs in the studio. What a great idea, right? Um, uh, 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 Mad Mike, do you have the chat room up there? Probably take care of this. Yes, I do. All right. Um, well, Chachi says we are the worst show ever. So um, thanks, Chach. Love you, too. Um, <laughs> uh and it look it looks like everyone's agreeing that the concept art of Black Adam just kind of looks like that they're drawing the rock. And Chach, Chachi did say that the Deadpool concept looked amazing too. John's always uh, uh, from before. He, he, I want to point out he he says that the uh, the seventies sucked. So as far as that Wonder Woman stuff, uh, Man of Steel was an amazing movie. Uh, Godzilla was also great. I, I think you and him, uh, Joel and John, went back went back and forth on Twitter about that. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. So, um, so a little bit out there. Uh, you know, everything. I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not very critical of a lot of things. I'm just like I, I ride the, uh, the, the train. You know what I mean for for well, the hype train. It's just I'm all aboard the I, hype train, man. I see Marvel doing so many things. Like I, yeah, haven't disliked a Marvel movie. True. I haven't. Like, True. None Me of neither. the ones that they've done, I haven't disliked any of them. Mm-hmm. DC, and I don't get it because Marvel has so many issues with their characters. Like, they can't do Spider-Man. They can't do the X-Men. They can't do the Fantastic Four. Yet somehow, they are kicking DC's ass. And you know, DC it, has the creative rights to literally everything they've ever done. In the long run, isn't it that, um, um, you know, Marvel has really kind of created this giant, amazing thing with a hand tied behind their back. Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy, really? You know, yeah. I mean, if if I, if I would told you like five years ago, there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and everybody's going to love it, you're going to be like, what the, what the heck? What are you talking? The one with the tree and the talking raccoon? Are you serious? Um, it's it, it sounds I also ridiculous. Want, I, was, I, I think, wonder if like being if like having certain things held back. Mm -hmm. makes the product better because they mm -hmm. have to try harder with it because i mean look at arrow and the flash can't be lazy like like they're not allowed to use batman they're mm -hmm. not allowed to use superman they're not yeah. allowed to use wonder woman yeah yet arrow has been amazing and the flash looks great mm -hmm. like it just just from the stuff that i've seen of it it looks like it's a hell of a lot looks fun. amazing looks amazing doesn't it um yeah i, and, I think, uh, I think john it. also juggle john also says in the chat room that I haven't disliked the Mar Marvel movie. Just wait till Ant Man, and I say, and I say, from what I've heard about Ant Man, it sounds super fun. Mm -hmm. You give me Michael Douglas as a bitter old Hank Pym. Yes, I'm okay with that. I'm on board with that. Because I... Michael Douglas kind of looks like the guy who would beat his wife. Mm. Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, Hank, Hank Pym did that in the comics. They're I know. Not, oh, I'm aware. Not, I'm aware. Oh, dude, you, not, watch, you are the ultimate version. Holy crap! Uh, they're, not, they're not exploring that in the movie. I they, hope they, not. It, it's definitely no, going to be a different tone. But you know, like the rest of us that have read that stuff, will be like, be like, yeah, he's going to be his wife. You know? Yeah, they, they've for, come out and for, said that they're not going into that aspect. That's good. Of it. That's that's kind of a deeper thing. Oh, you know. And also, um, I read an interview today that apparently, um, the the event, the sequence of events that happened between X Men One and X Men Three, mm -hmm. are not going to happen the same way. So Days of Future Past totally rewrote everything. Oh, rewrote everything. So you're saying that like like so things will be different when they come back for the next movie? Yeah, as far as some history e stuff. Basically, everything that was in those movies is in play. Okay, like they can they can do it, but I mean, who knows? Wolverine might get his medal. So, so, so yeah. basically all the inconsistencies we've had with like origins, you know, Wolverine origins and everything, we can just kind of uh, shrug it off because, well, we just mess with time. So, eh. so what if it doesn't really make sense and Sabretooth looks different and we did this, that and the other thing and that could have been MF Ross or it wasn't, you know, who knows? 
Um, yeah. Well, no, they they said Emma was dead. Yeah, I know. I, I they did. They, I know they did say they that, that Emma that's was not dead Emma. The but there's past. the not Emma uh, uh, part that they they put out. But anyways, uh, back to it. Uh, we'll we'll just kind of roll on here and let Malengo drop in when he gets here. Um, Independence Day two question mark. I've, I've been hearing about this for a while. Yeah, I I they, still don't know if that's they, really going to be a thing. The last thing I heard is about Will Smith is probably going to want too much money to get into it. But Bill Pullman, yeah, I mean, if you give me Bill I'm Pullman, sorry. I'm in. If you have to have Will Smith in it, I'm I'm sorry, you, you don't have Independence Day without Will Smith. That's true. That's true. Well, he wasn't such a big deal then. That I mean, it's a, it's a movie that really brought him out. But I could see. I mean, Jurassic Park never had all the same actors uh, through you know from movie to movie. So yeah, but but Jurassic Park. The star is the dinosaurs. This is true. This is Independence true. Day. The star was not the aliens. That's true. Yeah, because they kind of hit the aliens a lot. I don't know. We'll see. As long as they got Bill Pullman, I'll see what they dress up around him. There wasn't wasn't there a talk about like it being his kid, which I kind of like that I, concept. That makes sense. It's been long enough. So that's what I heard too. But then I think people saw After Earth, mm-hmm. and, and they're like, "Oh no, oh. we don't want to do that. We uh, don't want to do that at all." So uh, let's get to what we watched. Uh, looks like Malenko might be uh, back in time for that here in a second. So we'll go through ours right. and see if he's settled in for uh, talking about Lucy with you. Uh, I-, I saw actually uh, a Superman documentary, or no, the superhero documentary that you said that you actually own on DVD is currently on Netflix. Oh, yeah, the PBS one? The PBS superheroes one. It's It's been recommended oh. to me on there. It's so good. I just got, it, it, like, it's one of those I was just kicking on when I have a few minutes and I, I was watching pieces at a time. Uh, it's a three-parter. Uh, they go through basically all the eras like they do golden age silver age you know um and and up through they they really touch on just about every major thing that i could think of um i don't know what are your thoughts on uh, on that because i know you know obviously you own it so right um hearing adam west recite lines from the dark knight returns was the most amazing thing i've ever Mm -hmm. seen in a documentary like Mm -hmm. Give me a motion comic with Adam West just being Batman. Like Oh please. Oh, but actually, uh on that front, Lego Batman three has sixties Batman in it. Nice. And it's vo- and it's voiced by Adam West. And uh for anyone who's played the Lego Marvel game, there's like a Stan Lee in peril all over the place on every level. Mm-hmm. In the in Lego Batman three Adam West is in peril in every level. Nice. Nice. I love yeah. it. I love it. And, also, and the six Lego Joker has mm-hmm. a mustache. Also, I, I got to see, uh, for those who get Loot Crate, you got a special, is a villain's box this month. Some good stuff, including a DVD that was about the villains of the DC Universe. It looked like it was a couple years old. They actually had a, the their early trailer for the Man of Steel movie on it. I uh, highly recommend that. Uh, I don't know where else you could get it. I, I, actually, the name wasn't really real clear on it either. Um, and also a, a, a random series I picked up on Netflix, Mixology. Uh, it's only 13 episodes. It's basically like a bunch of these couples in a bar as one night over 13 episodes. Um, it was a good oh. couple watch. Uh, Michael, you might, yeah, you and Lisa might like that one actually. Yeah, I should check that out. I think, yeah. is that the one that's on HBO or you said Netflix? Uh, it looked like it said ABC. Uh, I think it was on ABC last year. Oh. Uh, canceled. It's only one season, but you know, everything's pretty self-contained. It's like watching a uh, you know six and a half hour movie in the long. And it's like twenty minutes and just like it, it was great to just put a couple on at a time. Um, definitely go check that out. Lego, you might, or uh, Mad Mike, you might actually like that with the lady too. Huh. Okay. So it's it's a lot smarter than it sounds. Like it, it's it's almost almost a How I Met Your Mother replacement for a little bit. So oh, like all right. Maybe. To, to that point, you know, it's it, it's interesting. It's uh, especially as a person that does not frequent the the night scene and has never really frequented the night scene and is very alien to the night scene. <laughs> it's it's kind of fun. And it's, in, and it's based in New York, so. Oh well, all right. So, that, you, I mean, that so, all, so, that Mike, automatically draws me in. <laughs> Mike, please, uh, uh, after you watch this, let me know uh, the points of accuracy. Yes, I so, will. As, as someone who is they, a um, an expert in the New York City nightlife. There you go. As, um, as I am. And the the there's like stuff like the table etiquette and the the finding the table and 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 like all these like things you never like. How do you 
manage through the night like this, you know. And then um, and then I learned something about Hawaiians too. So there's that. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, uh, Mike, what did you watch this week? All right. Well, I'll get into the two um, older movies I watched before Malengo and I talk about Lucy. Uh, I saw Bad Words mm -hmm. with Jason Bateman. Okay. That looked fun. Uh, awesome. Awesome movie. Yeah, it was super funny. It was really, really good. Uh, Jason Bateman was fantastic. The ending was a little bit, a little bit too convenient for me, but mm -hmm. it was overall, it was overall a really funny movie. Uh, then I also saw Sex Tape with Cameron Diaz and Jason Segel. Was that as bad as the critics and everybody else made it seem like? Um, it seemed like there was. It would have been forced. <laughs> Oh, it was it was forced, and you know, for for a movie called Sex Tape, I don't think there was a single bit of nudity in it. Oh, apart from maybe seeing Jason Segel's balls. Oh, <laughs> that's some that's some good climbing for the uh, timing for the trailer there. Yeah, oh, I mean, dude. don't get me wrong, Cameron Diaz looks very very good in the movie but um if you're going if you think about going to see that movie to see cameron diaz naked uh i would advise you to just search the internet <laughs> but uh, it was it was okay i mean um we saw it on a five dollar movie for um for a matinee like a five dollar tuesday thing okay and, and that was fine uh don't pay full price for it hmm. don't pay full price if you want to see it in theaters, try to see that matinee thing. If not, wait till, wait till Redbox. Mm -hmm. Nicely noted. Awesome. Well, you, Malengo? Um, well, I definitely saw Lucy this weekend. It was definitely up between that and... Um, Hercules. Hercules. Uh, but I, I decided with the flip of a coin, I'll go see the Matrix slash one of the Transcendents slash one of the... Limitless slash. <laughs> for those, I, 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 we have to disclaim for those on audio, uh, there is a baby present that likes pounding things. So, oh, <laughs> so yeah, we apologize yeah. for the audio there. Oh, sorry. Just there you go. My, my phone how, how can you be angry at that face? Though? How could you be angry at that face? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not you on audio, of course. Anyways, back to Baby's Lucy there, first go. podcast. <laughs> Um, and then I, I also got to see a uh, sneak preview or a early preview, whatever, of um, Expendables 3. I will say for as bad as those movies are, but for as good as those movies are, I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so I don't know what my... I don't know what my recommendation would be for that, but I feel like if somebody were going to pay money to go see it, it, they might be also pleasantly surprised. Um, but yeah, and then I just watched a lot of Netflix. I finished a lot of stuff. Uh, I finished um, House of Cards, and I uh, finished something else. That's how much like Netflix I have finished. I just wrapped things up. Oh, I I also finished Archer. Nice. Uh, but, I need I need to watch Archer from last season. Um, but yeah. gang gang back to Lucy. Let's do it. Was so that should, the movie? We do? Was that the movie you expected from watching the trailer? No, they did a really good job of of lying to us. <laughs> yeah. So so Which, okay. That now now going into this, we talked about this is like that other movie where a guy took a pill and got smart and and, and got all these abilities and everything right, except for maybe a little matrixy type of thing. Uh, so what kind of movie was it? I, I guess we're going semi spoiler here. Am, am I? Am I? Uh, I I can talk about it without spoiling. Anything. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, basically the way I'm the way I kind of like if you have you seen Cosmos Sorg. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen a little bit. Good. I've been seen, I've seen a little bit. Yeah, I think if Neil deGrasse Tyson were to ever get into the superhero <laughs> genre, <laughs> this would be the kind of movie he would make. Like, because it, it's it's very thought provoking. It's about the human mind. It's about creation. Yeah, it's, that's a that's actually a really good point, Ned Mike. Because when I saw it after I left, uh, the friend that I saw it with. I was joking about, I feel like I just sat through class. I was like, I felt like I was watching Discovery Channel, History Channel, 
and a little bit of a movie <laughs> mm -hmm. all wrapped in the one. It was really, I mean, it was really interesting. And if you're going to have someone do a lot of narration, you get Morgan Freeman. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the only, the only thing that would be better is if he actually had Neil deGrasse Tyson in that movie. Like it. <laughs> yeah. But it was, I, I, I was joking with someone about that. I was like, I know there's a good list of like white old like character actors <laughs> that you can use as the voice of reason, but when it goes to the black list, it's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> there's no one else on that list, and the and one person was like, "Well, maybe Morpheus," and I was like, "Yeah, but but he's bald. Morgan Freeman <laughs> has the great hair. No, you well, got no, no. Morgan Freeman, Lawrence Fishburne, and Sam Jackson. I think it, given certain." Pounds of dialogue, they can all chew through it pretty quickly. But Morgan Freeman has just been like the voice of reason on like everything recently. He's literally been God. Yes. Like even when the Lego universe decided they needed a God, they made it Morgan Freeman. I know. <laughs> but yeah, Lucy was a weird flick. It was like Scarlett Johansson was very good in it. Very good, like it was a lot of heady stuff to get into, but I thought I thought it was a really really interesting flick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean for what for what it was, I did leave feeling a little like uh, not disappointed, but kind of just like was that it? Like I, I was expecting something else. We did have a fan in the in the theater that decided to clap at your first like matrixy scene. <laughs> And I, was, and I was kind of just like, really? Um, I had a good conversation with uh, with somebody about the fact that she didn't really, besides like her an initial, I don't know, after she hit twenty percent, was it? Mm -hmm. That was that was all of her violence. After that, oh yeah. After she ascended twenty percent, she stopped being violent. So I thought that was interesting uh, perception. But that's the thing with this movie. It's like there are so many levels. And like other like layers of just like I don't know, just complexity to it that like like when people went into Inception, you still had that coolness factor, right? You still had that action. And even though it might have felt like layer upon layer upon layer of story, and if you missed something, you were lost. Like this movie I felt was lacking that like action bang, you know? And they tried. But she kind of just after a certain point, it was kind of just like all right. It's also the first movie I've seen in a while that uses a lot of stock footage to illustrate a point. Oh yeah, that's true. Which was, it was kind of uh, jarring, but once you like figured out what the stock footage meant, then it was just like very like oh. Did you okay. think they were doing that to try and be clever? Yes. Because absolutely. I mean, just... Absolutely. The first time I saw where, um, like how she first gets introduced into the plot, they they do like uh, leopard stalking a gazelle. Yeah. And I I'm like, okay, it's gonna be that kind of a flip. I got it. <laughs> I got it. And then they kept cutting back, like like as as she gets closer and closer to being drawn into a situation, like it's like the pouncing lesson from Lion King. I'm like, okay, we know where this is going. Like, yeah, she, this is not going to be her day. <laughs> so the argument of that, uh, Marvel and, uh, what, what's the studio that DC? No, the studio that's doing all of the Marvel, um, movies, Marvel, no, Disney. Oh, well, Disney, well, Marvel, same thing. Uh, so, you know, there was an argument where they were saying, well, we we're disappointed that Scarlett Johansson had taken this movie because if she does not perform to a certain level, it might mess up the uh, Black Widow character. I don't know that that actually matters. Like, no. I mean, based on what she pulled out, she didn't, she didn't play that role. So I feel like... We got a little bit of the sexy Scarlett Johansson. We got a little bit of the, okay, she can act Scarlett Johansson. And I, I think that, you know, that's just a different character. 
Well, yeah, the Black Widow character is inherently completely different from Lucy. Like, if they if they need a reason for a Black Widow solo movie, you should look at the Winter Soldier because that was like I mean, she was almost the second lead in that movie, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we slipped into spoilers, but was there anything that you would really? Okay, so okay. I'm going to say we're in spoilers. You want to do your music for it? Oh, all right. Um, you are entering another dimension. A dimension of sight and sound. A dimension where the computers of the future look like giant penises with light. <laughs> what? You are entering the spoiler zone. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't like um, what we centered. I just want to state that right now. So um, <laughs> so I'm going to be over you here. You the gathering of the juggalos this weekend. You've seen way worse things than that. Yes. Yes. So, what if my little uh, this thing is probably not justified, but something that I found extremely annoying. Uh, so, the movie does not take place in America. Okay, we've baseline that. Hey, she's in New York for five seconds. Yes. Okay. She is in New York for for a quick five seconds. It's like we need a cool backdrop, so let's go to New York, where all the televisions are somehow playing the same. And uh, all right, back to my. So we start off in Hong Kong. Uh, no, not in Hong Kong. We start Taiwan. off in, in yeah in Taiwan, South Korea, Taiwan, whatever. Um, in Taiwan. But the the villains are Korean, which is interesting. But clearly this. This is something that is a foreign, you know, we are in foreign lands. We go to France. And throughout this, English is the, the, the primary spoken language. So my, my main gripe is when the Koreans come in and the French guy comes around the corner and with his gun held up, the French police officer says, do you speak English? Put down your weapons. Why couldn't we just speak French? We're in France. Like, why um, is English... <laughs> English is actually more widely spoken than you think. Here's the reason why it annoyed me. It's because they threw down the baseline that she could pick up languages rather quickly after she had transcended something like 40%. So at that point, we've just opened the door. So why bring it up if we're not even going to use it? Well, like, it would have been okay to show subtitles. It would have been okay to, like... To show that stuff. I think the difference is they were talking to like law enforcement types. And with law enforcement, you have to have some language, some semblance of a language barrier that's broken down. Yeah. Because like even even if you go to certain precincts in New York City, like there are people that will speak Spanish, there are people who speak Chinese, there are people who speak Japanese. Like you have to have some kind of a cultural boundary. And if you're not going to be situated in the US, you have to have an English speaking cop because of all the tourism that happens and tourists get robbed. So if they go to a police station and they can't understand anyone there, that's not a good police station. So I, I was okay with the language issues. Were you okay with, uh, I find it, I, I find it comical sometimes when we have these villains that just can't let it go. The, uh, the, the main Korean who, who decides he's going to travel to Paris in order to retain all of his his stuff, and then to the point of he must kill Scarlett Johansson's character. Um, I thought that was rather interesting. Uh, I don't know. I, I, just I, thought, I thought that was that was the, I thought that was the loosest of plot threads that they were trying to weave into it. Like, yeah. Like I mean, I get it. You have to have a big bad in a movie like this. But at the end of the day, she literally could have just turned off his brain at any one point and just decided exactly. not to. Um, I don't know. Overall, I mean, I, I thought the movie was fun. I mean, we had a lot of jokes afterwards, like the hint, she is everywhere. Um, I thought that was pretty hilarious. But Yeah, um, uh, the... the by the way, if you haven't done a comic for this, the joke should be Scarlett Johansson is watching you masturbate. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do just a white room of blood with a chair. And then <laughs> in the next scene, she's like behind me in the theater saying, I am everywhere. Like, oh my gosh, what the hell? Uh, yeah, I, I, 
I don't know. Like I was hearing that Hercules was also a fun ride. I think these are just two movies that people are going to go into it. They're either going to be, they're going to walk away saying, yeah, that was good. Or they're going to walk away saying, oh, I should have seen the other movie. It's two mm-hmm. movies that people are going to forget about by Friday evening. This is so true. By Thursday evening. <laughs> All right. Um, what would you well, – okay, so the last thoughts. What would you – obviously, we said this is a forgettable movie. Would you recommend people seeing this in theater or just waiting? Um, if you can see it on matinee, I would I would see it. If you, if you have, like, $5 Tuesdays or something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think I agree between both of them. I mean, I, I am going to probably go see Hercules for 5 bucks, uh, but that's where I'm at with this. If you can see it for 5 bucks on matinee – Sure, it's worth it. Scarlett Johansson is she, she's attractive. Um, all right, I guess we could wrap it up uh, with that. Well, um, uh, so how many times are you going to see Guardians this weekend? I'm hoping <laughs> that at well, see, so, so the thing is, we're trying to set up a Pittsburgh meetup for people that are in Pittsburgh to go see the movie, and then we'll do like a little meetup afterwards where we talk about it, but. I have a feeling if if I'm if I am unlucky, I might be seeing this movie three times. <laughs> <laughs> I get overload when it comes to movies. When I tend to see, when I tend to know things, it's hard for me to to go into it saying, "All right, what didn't I see?" There's there's something that I'm going to be so excited about that I'm just going to be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, that's all. That's all I want to see again." And then I also tend to spoil things for people. So I'd have to go see it like by myself. <laughs> I I am currently planning on seeing it twice. And as much as I like the uh as much as I like the um the guy who was in the Jackie Robinson movie, I'm not going to go see his movie. Oh yeah. I I feel sorry for that. That was a very bad decision for them to put that up against this movie. Uh but I feel like old people will probably go see that. But, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, James Brown still touches like, and that'll probably have longevity too. Like, yeah. Well, what, what what month are we in? We're about to hit into August, so I don't see them keeping it on. Yeah, it might it might last until like. I'll I'd be interested to see how long that movie holds out. Well, because I mean, because Forty Two didn't do that well in the theaters either, but it was a really good movie. So yeah. I kind of feel like they should have brought this movie out closer to the holidays. Okay, well, um, yeah. So I, I, so I mean, we're both gonna see Guardians. I'm gonna see it in IMAX 3D. But uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know if. I'm oh, hey, see we're it back. We're off of the spoilers. I'm sorry. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, yeah, we're back. We're back. <laughs> I just, well, I, you know, I just walk away when you guys do spoilers. I haven't seen yet. So, um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, Guardians. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing. I'm guessing it in IMAX 3D. I'm taking my buddy to it for his birthday. I'm super excited for it. Mm. And I just, I'm saying it now, I normally do not do this. Mm-hmm. But from the 17 minutes, if you can see this in IMAX, see it in IMAX. Hmm. Uh, hey, uh, did you guys get to the comment uh, about Lucy in the chat room? Oh, no. Uh, no. Bobby saw, because I made a mention of Lucy on Twitter. Um, he says, I came in here to say that Lucy was one of the worst movies I've paid money to see in a theater. Uh, there was no element of danger. She was invincible from the get-go, dot, 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 pretty much. And in the time of dinosaurs, I think I should have put in the spoiler up for that part, probably. But uh, so no, there you go. No, 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 that's how they open the movie. Oh, okay. I, I love that you drew him into the chat room with that comment that I tweeted. So, um <laughs> He has, some uh, other, he has some other comments, but I feel like they're probably spoilerly too, so you guys can go read that. Oh, actually, Bob, yeah, Bobby. The drug was, anyways, but no, Guardians, I love that they say that it's the best Marvel movie yet. Um, I, I think we're going to have a very big surprise with Guardians. I think every, everybody's been seeing this, and it's been it's been gaining up. And uh, I, th- I think your box office is going to be re- very, very, very surprising. I think your Ninja Turtles will be very, very underwhelming, unfortunately. Oh, Nick. Ni- Ninja Turtles is going to get smoked by Guardians. I think so too. I think I think Guardians is going to be number one two in, two in a row, and Ninja Turtles yep, is going to be like. Eh. So, anyways, we got to wrap this up, guys. So we got to wrap this up. Ah.
Uga, 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 chaka, uga, 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 chaka, uga, uga, chaka. <laughs> On that note, as they sing us out, I'm at Sorgatron. He's at Rambling Mango. He's at Mad Mike Forty Day Three. You take my song away, man. I wanted to be played out. That was good. That was good. Lango, Lango, he's at that ramblingreview.com, I think. Yeah, you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango. That Rambling Review. And you can also my blog, but yeah, I'm, I'm there. All over the place. And you'll see uh, Mad Mike on the Wrestling Mayhem Show along with me, of course, as well. And all, uh, I am Groot. And, um, and, de- and definitely check out our Facebook uh Fruit page. Yes. Uh, we're trying to get a meetup this this week, like I said earlier, for Guardians. So if you're interested and you're in the Pittsburgh area, definitely come out mm-hmm. and we will have fun. We so, promise we will try and make it as entertaining as humanly possible. And that group is Rambling uh, Rambling Movie Minute on the Facebook as well. So uh, until true. then, uh, see, see it. See, see, go see some movies. Yeah, see you. Uh, see you in the movies. Ooga, 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 chaka. I am Groot.